Hi, I'm Julius, 37. And I'm Mars, 40. I live in Germany with my wife, our two sons and our two dogs. And I live in the Netherlands with my wife, our son and our dog. We are both entrepreneurs together with our wives. And next to that, I am also employed. We live very busy lives with very few spare time. So we need to make sure we get the most out of our days. We want to live healthy, develop ourselves and challenge ourselves. And together with that, we want to be good husbands. And a fun dad. And that's why we're sticking to a strict regime. For 75 consecutive days. Welcome to Father the Grid, thriving through 75 hard. Yes. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Mars needed to get stuff done in the background. <laughs> so. This is also fatherly grit. I had to give the dog extra food. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Mars, another week went by. We hopefully got a shit done. So... Uh, welcome back. Thanks for taking the time. Yeah, you're welcome. It's um, it's difficult getting shit done because like every day I'm getting stopped in the street by people saying, "Hey, are you the guy from uh, from the podcast from Fatherly Grid?" <laughs> 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 it's, it's tough. It's a tough life. Yeah, this imposter syndrome <laughs> kicking in, and. Yeah, obviously, guys, we're joking. But I do. I mean, you just mentioned it to me, but I do get more and more messages after every episode uh, which is uh, which is nice to hear that's true i also received a couple of messages even uh, even from the us which made me more even more happy yeah we we have a full list today so before we jump in uh, before we jump in quick update concerning the challenge and health and energy so Mars, how are you doing? Yeah, I think I think we can pick it up from from where we ended it last week. We uh, I think as if I speak for myself, I got more energy again. I had a good week, I had a, a lot of fun. Got up at five thirty in the uh, morning this morning to get shit done before uh, we brought Siggy uh, to a new daycare center, and I don't mind getting up that early, which is like one of the funny. You know, like side uh, benefits from this entire challenge. Um, just a quick recap of all the things. I checked every box. No issue there. Uh, as I mentioned last week, for me right now, it is really uh, finishing for the sake of finishing. Because I already know, okay, what am I going to continue after this um, this period? Um, but yeah, no, no issues here. How about you? Nice, nice. Yeah, no issues here. I had just one thing where I more likely forget to finish my pages. So I started reading at some point and then just kicked the book because I had stuff to do. And um, I got into bed and I was like, oh, geez, <laughs> I forgot. And I, I um, so the biggest challenge more likely is to close out the app. I constantly, so I take the picture in the morning, for example, but I didn't upload it on the app. And... Every morning I get the reminder, did you fail, question mark. I was like, ah, oh, fuck, okay. Um, and it's always a weird feeling kind of reopening the app and just say no, because he's, they are asking you twice. So when you re reopen the app, they said, did you fail? No. Are you going to continue or are you going to redo the challenge? So two questions, just really making sure <laughs> that you didn't fuck up. <laughs> so I didn't I didn't know that you had an app for it. Yeah, well. I paid Andy Frisella five dollars for literally a list. <laughs> you can just take off. <laughs> this this dude is is robbing you blind. Yeah, no, he deserves he he he's, he deserves it. It's fine. I'm I'm good. But concerning the challenge, I had two amazing bike rides last week, which make me really happy. The weather is getting better, so I got off, kind of got the cargo bike out of the winter hibernation, mm. and I started to ride the cargo bike um, with my youngest. Um, to daycare and to s swimming lessons or whatever is not so I I try to kind of let the car sit in the driveway and use the bike, perfect as additional car as an additional car workout, which is not basically true because it has like electric support, so it's just fifty percent cardio. I think Andy Frisella is now going to charge you ten euros for the app. Yeah. <laughs> 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 concerning health and energy again last week so 
And I think we now have like three consecutive weeks where I at least had one kid at home being sick. Yeah. Luckily, since Monday, everybody, is, one is in daycare, one is in school. But we had a play date on Tuesday um, before um, I had to bring my youngest to gym class because he's with this other kid that visited us, um, their gym class. And we went to gym class and next morning... I received a text saying, yeah, my, our son is the puked the whole night. Oh. And I was like, Jesus Christ, please, 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 please don't, don't. No. no. <laughs> uh, luckily, so far, we're good. Knock on wood, knock on knock wood. Knock on wood, yeah, knock on my head, knock on wood. <laughs> yeah. And which is even more, uh, I don't know, um, annoying based on the fact that we, oh, my older son has a hockey tournament um, four hours away from here over the weekend, so I'm not here, and my wife would be alone with the two dogs and our youngest, and a puking kid alone is just, an, it's just work that's not necessary. We, we had a similar, similar situation where um, last year I went on a skiing trip with friends, or it's yeah, it's one and yeah, it's a bit more than a year ago, and exactly during that period, Ziggy got ill, and had the shits like I don't know six, seven times per night, and Yosha was all alone. And yeah, like when I came back, it, it was horrible. She was a wreck. Uh, so I can imagine that that must be tough if that happens. Yeah. So. Uh, let's hope for the best and that um, that's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Aside of that... Do you also notice with uh, with your energy that the days are getting longer? Does that affect you a lot? Yes, it does. And I realized that when I came... So swimming lessons for my, for my youngest end around 6, 6.15, 6.20. And I, when we started a few weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, it was still dark when we come outside. And now it's getting... I wouldn't say bright, but at least you, you don't have to turn on the lights on your bicycle because it's still, you can see stuff and it's, yeah, it's so nice. I enjoy it so much. Yeah. And in the morning, um, the morning walks are not in the dark anymore. And it's just, I uh, enjoy it. I really enjoy it. Yeah. From, uh, from my personal kind of, that is <clears throat> obviously part. So winter depression can go now. Thanks. Yes, thank um, you. <laughs> and health-wise, I still I'm still a little bit congested, but not too much when I'm outside, obviously with the cold. And it's still cold here. So we have I have no idea what Fahrenheit, but we still kind of bounce back and forth between ten and two degrees. So it really Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. But uh, I feel good. I'm I'm happy. I'm energized. And I, I actually was looking forward to talk to you so uh, <laughs> and have romance. an update. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I want to say one more thing because last week, for the first time in ages again, like I started doing a CrossFit workout, Ooh. Uh, which felt really good. So my training last week on Friday was, um, was a kettlebell training and um, just, you know, like a 20-minute workout where you just do a lot of leg and back and 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 arm exercises, and then I decided to finish it up with um, the CrossFit Open workout, at least a part of it. Which is um, for those who do not follow CrossFit, it's a one dumbbell workout, and you need to do 21 snatches with your left arm, 21 burpees, 21 snatches with your right arm, 21 burpees. And then do the entire thing with 15 on your left, 15 burpees, 15 on your right, 15 burpees. And the same with nine on the left, nine burpees, nine on the right, nine burpees. And to be honest, my time was pretty good. It was, okay, I don't remember it right now. So this is a really bad preparation, 12 minutes something, which I was more than happy with. And for the first time in ages, I really went beyond my limit again, you know, like in terms of conditioning which uh, felt really good. So I think tomorrow I'm going to do a uh, such workout again. I'm impressed. That sounds... Wow. Yeah, that is And the dumbbell my... is 17 and a half kilos. I need to mention that. Mm. With CrossFit, the official is 22 and a half, but I don't have that one. And mm -hmm. I don't think my body would 
thank me if I took that one. <laughs> <laughs> so I just had one chest workout, so I didn't hit the 100 kgs on the bench, but I was able to uh, do 90 for on the first set, I think for 10 reps and then declined eight and six. So I think that looks good. And incline, um, I also hit like the 30 kilo dumbbells for the first time this week. But I, nice. I, since I don't have a workout partner, I'm pretty hesitant because I'm scared for like getting injured or just getting killed by yeah. a dumbbell. So <laughs> dumbbell on your face. And I don't want to do that. So keep it slow. Um, Dude, we, it, either you guys need to move or we guys need to move so we can work out together. Uh, <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> it would any response from listeners i feel like they are more trickling in so do you have anything i have a couple of of things uh, and i i didn't even told you uh in the beginning so oh uh, so. well, i i got the um the remark the, um uh, the day after the the episode released i got a message only saying the image of Ziggy on a yoga mat doing exercises is super cute, <laughs> 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 which uh, which made me smile a lot. And for the rest, uh, I got a couple of messages saying that this um, was definitely the last episode was definitely one of the most energetic ones and um, one of the most interesting ones. Uh, one, yeah, apparently. So okay, then we, let's we, we set a standard there. Yeah, let's keep up the pace. <laughs> <Make> sure, <laughs> come on, let's go. <laughs> um, yeah for uh so interestingly um so i i want to um i want to talk really quick about kind of the whole commercial stuff and making money on podcasts um really quick so do we make money on this podcast no we don't not really uh. at least but uh, we made a bit of money over amazon so people buy books so uh, we have a couple of affiliate links and obviously everything would help so we can buy Mars a fancy uh, microphone stand and a fancy microphone as uh, as I yes. have. That would be awesome. Can we also buy me a house where I can put that fancy <laughs> microphone stand? <laughs> yeah, I think um, we, we have to change the concept of the pot, I think. And yeah, we have to move to the US maybe or something like that. <laughs> but I got it. I got <laughs> That was so funny. Um, because somebody asked me, yeah, do you guys actually um, get requests for like to promote on the pod? And I, I and literally a couple of days ago, the person must have listened to the pod as we're saying, we still have a heavy female demographic. So we got the request if we would like to promote periodic underwear on the podcast. <laughs> 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 Obviously, I declined and said, yeah, no, thank you. Um, but it was what, what, what is that exactly? Is this a stupid question? Is it like pads that you put in your underwear? Or is no, it like it's an actually underwear. Underwear, underwear, it's, I think, all over the place, all over Instagram right now. So it's reusable underwear. So when you're on your period, you can wear it. It will catch whatever comes out there and you can wash it. And Okay. Interesting. Yeah, it's obvious. It's a trend, it seems like, because yeah. I was told that there are a lot of providers of this kind of garment on yeah. the market well, right I, now. I was laughing about this. Let me just put one thing straight. Um, I don't want to make a joke about women having their period or something. This <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all our listeners. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, the, the other thing I wanted to say, how you can support us is obviously, um, maybe if you find one of the books interesting, buy it through our links. But on uh, the other hand is just tell somebody. That would be nice. Yes. The only way we can grow and make sure we reach more people is if you tell somebody and say, hey, there are two dudes, a German and a Dutchy. Uh, talking about family and their amateur diet and sports stuff. But tell a friend, let them know, share on whatever platform you use on social media. That would be really nice. 
So thank you. Hey, you know what would be funny? Yeah. If we got the request to promote <laughs> birth control. <laughs> <laughs> so <it's, laughs> hey, we hear you guys talk about how difficult it is to have kids. So maybe here, <laughs> condoms, buy it, <laughs> use it. <laughs> Do not get kids. No. <laughs> yeah. No, we would decline that as well and say, hey, it's awesome. Uh, even when it's exhausting from time to time. But on the other hand... <laughs> no, 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 come on. We need to keep the energy in. Ah, yeah, it's yeah, fun. Okay, okay, okay. It's fun. <laughs> uh, I got a couple of responses. Uh, one was like, it is funny so that we have a good dynamic, both of us. But it's interesting that I am the one who's just talking and doesn't stop and don't <laughs> think about it, what he talks about. And you are the articulate one. And... You are the, the one who's actually one. <laughs> thinking about what he's going to say and be really precise aside of me just babbling along and just doesn't come to a point. <laughs> that was interesting. Well, pretty much sums up our, char our character as well, right? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> that was funny. Um, and uh, I got two messages uh, from the US, which was really cool. First one is the whole mom mob or being influenced and under pressure from the outside was one where she talked about that Instagram, for example, a lot of times is kind of the outside where they showcase kind of family stuff and share with their extended family and stuff like that, or maybe Facebook as well. And if you don't have a private profile, obviously everybody can see it. And that kind of the shit talking behind the back is pretty intense in certain circles and mm. that obviously that can drain you mentally and make you vulnerable and make you question yourself yeah. and we we discussed it the last time so i wanted i don't want it to get into deep but the other thing that i found super interesting and i got this all um let's talk really quick about daycare because um, i got a message where the mom send us and say yeah Daycare is obviously super difficult in the US because I'm actually paying. I have two kids, one toddler, one is in preschool. So I got my new bill for this year and I'm going to pay 43,000 US dollars this year just for daycare. And I haven't had time to write back. But obviously, I wanted to know, is there stuff that is tax deductible so you get some of the money back? Maybe some of the other listeners can answer that question. But and when it's not the case, obviously, that's terrible. Because I pay 190 euros for my youngest son, who's in daycare, for five days a week from eight till three, including that's ridiculous. lunch. That's ridiculous. And, including lunch. Yeah, and watch out. And the 190s are also tax deductible, so I can put it in my tax return yeah. as an expense. So it, I could ask my wife how much it is then, but I have no idea. So, <laughs> but I, I was thinking about the, the, the ridiculous raise on the cost of living when it comes down to groceries and kind of all the day to day stuff, plus daycare plus sports maybe and something like that the amount of money you have to spend to hold up just the basics that's crazy yeah. and what kind of money do you have to make to afford putting your kid into daycare well i started calculating a bit myself as one well. i'm wondering if this person in the us if if she's having her two kids in the daycare for five days or whether it's maybe less days Did she mention something about that? No. Okay. Because what I, I I just quickly calculated. Ziggy's going to the daycare center three days a week, and we get a bill of sixteen hundred and fifteen euros per month, which comes down to nineteen, almost nineteen and a half thousand euros per year. So that's that's what it cost us to bring him to the daycare center three days a week. I have to say that in the Netherlands there is a pretty good system, which is. Um, we get money back from the government as a support so that the cost of a daycare isn't, you know, like going to exceed your whatever you can pay. So depending on how much you earn, 
they give you money back. If you earn above a certain salary, it's it's fewer. And if you earn less money, obviously you get more support. And that's how they make daycare center affordable for everyone, like more or less at the same level in, in comparison to what you can pay. So out of these 1600 euros that I pay or we pay per month, we get 1260 euros back. So, you know, netto, it costs us about 400 euros, uh, which is pretty decent. I think we are now switching a bit to a different daycare system. So we bring in one day a week to the daycare center and then two days to a let's call it a daycare parent. So here in the Netherlands, and you you just explained to me in Germany, I have it as well. A person who has the right certification, et cetera, uh, can have sort of a daycare at home. Obviously, the home will need to be checked by an independent institution. Uh, she needs to be registered, have all the licenses, uh, have, you know, like a, a first aid, all these kind of things. And they will do random checks to make sure that, you know, like she is sticking to the rules. And um, I think she's allowed to have a maximum group of five children by herself. Uh, we know this lady uh, because she used to work at the daycare center and Ziggy had a really good contact. And obviously, because she doesn't have the overhead as a daycare center has, it's cheaper. She has a lower hourly rate. And we think for Ziggy, we decided for this because Ziggy needed to be more challenged at the daycare center. He was like in the in the baby group and um, he started to, you know, like rampage a bit together with another boy because they were a bit too old and they were not, you know, like mentally tickled enough. And now he's in a smaller group. Um, she's doing way more activities with the kids, uh, so this, which is better for Ziggy. And it's obviously better for our wallet as well. Um, and I do think it's tax deductible as well. So in the end, I think it's it's a fair price. But what I'm wondering for you, daycare center is not cheap because they have, you know, like they have to rent a place, they have to buy all the toys, they have to buy the stuff for the food, ut utility bills, and obviously personnel, which is a big part of their budget. So do you know anything about how they get the money from do they get money from government or other institutions or how does it work so this particular daycare is a private association or a private club where a conglomerate of parents in addition paying like an additional like annual fee which is not much i feel like overall it's 100 euros per person max i feel like or whatever you would like and are able to pay but i feel the state is supporting this kind of institutions really heavily so says they subsidized the whole thing and i just wanted to yeah. say so you're paying more for daycare than i pay for my mortgage every month <laughs> <laughs> well uh, we're paying even more for our rent yeah. believe it or not so <laughs> that's crazy ouch ouch Aztec, ouch yeah. <laughs> yeah but i i felt like that was interesting interesting uh thing to, to yeah. talk about really quick and again then you've so and if it's not tax deductible with a specific income situation there there has to be then the discussion or oh, do i really is it actually worth it to go to work and spend the money on daycare when all my income is going to get spent exactly on somebody else who's taking care of my son if i could just do it on my own and see my son growing up but that's that's what parents here in the netherlands do um like they start calculating okay is it worth working an extra day and having to pay daycare fee or should i stay at home and take care of the kid yeah and um yeah i'm I'm curious as well if this person might reach out again whether or not um the fee that she pays or that they pay in in the u.s whether it's dependent on their salary or their their you know like how much they can pay if if there is some kind of allowance or support they get from governments or institutions would be interesting to hear about it. And I have another question for you because I had a conversation with a long time listener. Uh, so hi, if you hear that again. Um, I actually um, was on the phone two days ago with her 
and she was listening to our, our podcast while I was calling. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but she told me a story which I find really interesting and I want to hear your view. So, because we, talk, we talked about the whole play date and relationship between parents and how do you act on specific things they do, for example, with their kids, which you don't agree on, for example. So to, to paint the picture here, so they were on a, on a play date And the kid, so the other kid is a bit older, I would say a year or something like that. And the, she has a toddler and the kid shoved the toddler the first time everybody said, Hey, mm. not cool. Stop it. The second time the kid shoved the toddler again and she fell and, and the mom then grabbed the kid and actually said, yeah, stop it. You little witch or you are a bad kid. Yeah. And she's two years old or something like that. And, and just, just to get this straight, did she say it to her own kid? Yeah, to her or own to kid. Who the was kid the person who shoved? So the kid shoved her, her daughter, yeah. th son, I don't know, shoved uh, the toddler. And she grabbed him or her and said, yeah, you're bad. You are a bad kid. You are just a little piece of shit, more likely. And obviously hmm. the, the, the person I talked to had a, the immediate response instead of just standing back and say, thank you, just shut the fuck up. What are you doing? Said, no, you're not to the kid, <laughs> mm. <laughs> which obviously made it a little bit awkward, but she was like, I, I'm, I'm not planning to have another play date with them because I'm, that, that's not cool. And I, that we don't vibe with each other as parents much, at least when it comes down to the parenting stuff, obviously. But I wanted to ask you the question. So would you then tell the parent, hey, by the way, shouldn't do that. It's not, it's, it's not working and it's not good for your kid. Or would you just shut up and just leave it be and say, okay, this is none of my business. That is their kid. Do whatever. Yeah, I would have the the attitude like, okay, this is not my place to have an opinion or like to say something about it. Obviously, to have a, an opinion, yes, but I'll keep it to myself at that point. I think everyone has their own way of, you know, like raising their kid or disciplining their kid or treating their kid. I think it's not my place to say something about that unless there are specific you know, like boundaries overstepped or how do you say it? Like if she would get physical, I would probably say something about it. like, Hey, come on, this, this is probably not the right way to do it. Or, you know, like something to prevent that child from being hurt. Obviously, you know, like with words, you can hurt as well and you can damage a lot, but yeah, as I would, I would probably think, okay, this is not my place to say something. If she were to talk to my kid like that, I would definitely say something about that. I would definitely say in a as polite as possible way, and I'll have really difficulties being polite. It's such a <laughs> yeah. Should not to talk to my kid like that. Mm -hmm. That my kid is a witch. That he's just having an emotion, but he's not having the right tools to deal with it. But yeah, it's. I have a story about people that I know. They were at a brother of them theirs and they had kids and uh, this brother or sister would you know like uh, the kid would do something and he would smack the kid on the butt on the diaper and you know like come on don't do it and it was not a hard smack it was not a smack on the ass or whatsoever just on you know like on the diaper and <laughs> and and uh, oh no he did it actually and the other like his brother said we didn't see this <laughs> you know like basically saying we have an opinion about this we do not approve what you just did but we'll we we'll won't say anything <laughs> but yeah no not my place yeah how about you yeah say something i i i feel the same i had a similar situation but it was a, we were at the hockey game and my son had a weak moment and punched another kid I, feel, I I think it was not intentional. It was more like a fun thing to do, but the other kid, kid is pretty sensitive and just 
and how they are nowadays. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so the parents approached me because it was on a ter tournament and they were there and said, yeah, your kid just hit our son. That's not cool. Could you just talk to him? And I was like, yeah, sure, no problem. Um, so I pulled him aside so nobody can hear it, that I'm just having a conversation with him, told him, hey, that's not cool. Stop it. it I, don't, I don't even remember what it was about. But it said, that's not cool. Being physical against anyone, especially your teammates, is not the way to kind of solve a conflict. And I'm not even joking about, so stop punching each other in the nuts, more likely, because yes. it's not cool. And, and I said, do me a favor, go over, apologize. And then we're good to go. And so he did. He said, yeah, I went over there. And this the guy, the dude was still standing next to their parents. And then the mom started to talk to my son and tell him, yeah, you can't do that, blah, blah, blah. And I was at the brink of going over and telling her to fuck off and shut the fuck mm. up and just take care of your own kid. He just came over to apologize. He got that it was wrong. So... Why do you have the audacity to discipline or talk about exactly. kind of? Yeah. Um, but then I said, okay, I made the executive decision. If I go over there and tell her in my friendly way, because that I can't, I can't just, there are two ways. <laughs> Not saying anything <laughs> or being rude as fuck. <laughs> so there's no middle there's ground. There's no middle ground. So I decided, okay, just let it go. I told my son just, just forget about it. Just leave it be. She needed that. Just ignore it, what she just said. Mm. Didn't you feel the need afterwards to just one-on-one -on -one with this lady and just say, look... You know how it is. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of my energy because there's nothing I'm going to tell her that is going to change your mind. Not one thing. Mm. And well, you can't you can't reverse what she did. So yeah, and uh, again, that's uh, and I don't want to. So being in a team sports with little kids and helicopter parents, and I'm a helicopter parent myself from time to time. So there's no, uh, it's a dicey relationship between everyone, you know, mm. especially when it's in such a, such a more likely young age. So I just want to, I didn't want to disturb the force. You know what I mean? It, it's interesting because. Like when you said that she was then after your son apologized, she was sort of disciplining your son or like teaching him uh, what, sh what he could and uh, can and cannot do. I was thinking like I would go over there and tell her, look, OK, he got it. I did what you wanted. I talked to him. I spoke to him. He understands it now and he apologized. So let's leave it at that. This is what I'm thinking now. But probably when I was in your, were in your shoes, I'd be there, you know, like with heart rate going up, adrenaline rushing through my head and I'd be like, you, yeah. okay, let's not go over there right now. Yeah. <laughs> but on the other hand, then I thought about it. And then from time to time, if I feel like people are not, disciplining their kids especially in the hockey context and a lot of parents are not there sometimes i just take their kids and say just get your shit together that's not you're not going to run around and act like crazy here that is not how we do mm. it here so so and maybe some parents are not fine with that as well maybe so but it annoys but I think me that's a different yeah, thing but it annoys me <laughs> that's that's when the parents are not yeah. there yeah that's true but if a parent comes to you and says hey could you talk to your kid yeah then you do that yeah. then there is no need for the other parent to do it yeah. anymore that's true yeah, yeah. and that was interesting interesting and uh, it's especially with this whole discipline i feel like don't throw stones in a glass house most of the mm -hmm. time you know nobody's perfect but on and don't work on stuff that you're not able to change because it's a waste of energy. And that's the, my mantra now. Don't, Amen. don't be angry about stuff you're not able to change. But this does touch a very interesting subject, I think. Yeah. Doesn't this touch the fixed mindset and growth mindset? Yeah, and we, we uh, I haven't, I think that's just the third episode where we, <laughs> talked about the books <laughs> cliffhanger <laughs> uh, the heavy cliffhanger yeah and not even that this is exciting. going to be such a di disappointment for those listeners yeah. <laughs> who were hanging on to hear this story yeah. so mars and i obviously the 75 hard um, challenge includes reading 10 pages in a book 
um, in a non-fictional book and we both started to read Mindset. The name of the author, Carol S. Dweck. Mindset, changing the way you think to fulfill potential. It's a super interesting and a pretty good read. And she talks about the growth mindset and the fixed mindset. And basically, um, to make a long story short, I feel like a growth mindset is a person who thrives on a challenge. So mm -hmm. even you have setbacks, you pull out the positive stuff and learn from it and go on and try to continue and work on the challenge with the stuff you learn. Um, the fixed mindset is more like the, I'm going to take on a challenge. And I'm, if I'm not able to fulfill the challenge, I get frustrated and let it go more likely. Yeah. So, so the fixed mindset is, is, is oriented on the goal, the achievement. Yeah. And uh, growth mindset is, is focused on the path, the journey, the challenge. Right. And I think that is how it is in a nutshell. And, and it, interestingly, when you look back, and I would say how, for example, my parents raised me on a fixed mindset. And I, I think I'm, and I'm trying to change that. I didn't realize it, to be honest, before I read this book. No, me neither. And I annoyed my wife with it already, <laughs> talking about this kind of stuff. <laughs> but I was always goal oriented and get easily frustrated when I don't come to the thing I want to do. And I think it's a heavy mindset shift to say, hey, actually, it's a journey. Enjoy the ride. Make sure you get the most out of it. And if the end result is the exact thing you wanted, awesome. If not, take everything out of it that will bring you to that result you're looking for and just go on. Yeah. And can I add one more thing? Because uh, what I understood from the book as well is that in different situations, you can have one person can have different types of mindset as well. So for instance, if it comes to, I don't know, sports, you can have a very growth mindset. And when it comes to, I don't know, learning algebra or whatever, you can have a fixed mindset. Yeah. For instance, I think a lot of, you know, like the pro athletes, uh, the good ones, the really successful ones, I think most of them have a growth mindset because they, when they do not reach a certain level or goal or they don't do not win they learn from the experience why did i not win and how can i develop myself further and that's how they get more and more and more successful right yeah i think that hits exactly it the thing is and which what surprised me in that book is that i was able to get pretty a lot out of it so and how i may be trying to act and kind of conquer and work on stuff in the future And the other thing is how I'm trying to teach my kids when it comes down to accomplishments. So, and in this book, they, they're saying, and maybe there are different approaches, but I, I feel that makes sense that you don't praise the accomplishment. You're more likely to start praising the journey. Mm. Now, I have a good example, which just happened today. Um, twice, two actually. One is my son has a pretty hefty handwriting i would say which uh, my wife doesn't have a good handwriting i don't have a good handwriting maybe there's something genetic in it but uh, <laughs> he's he's gonna become a doctor yeah, he is not but i feel like the handwriting is more like the, the result that he wants to get stuff done quickly and kind of his he's a pretty smart kid so he wants to get done but obviously especially when it comes down to writing if you write fast especially when you still new at it there will be there will be mistakes in the writing and that will influence your grades and in, in certain parts but today he showed me his notebook where they do like learning words 15 20 learning words every week um, and they learn to write it and the uh, the whole mm -hmm. grammatical stuff And he put so much effort into it and it looked amazing. 
I, I was surprised. I told him you didn't write that, right? That wasn't you. That was you. You bribed somebody. That he's the she. It looked like <laughs> she is going to write that. And he said, "No, I took time and I I put a lot of effort into it." And it's like I exactly did what the book told me to say. I can see that. I can see that you put a lot of thought into it and you put a lot of effort into it to create. And I asked him, did you spend much time on it? So I asked him about the journey so we can kind of recollect what it costs him to get to this accomplishment. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's a really small thing, but I think that is a good example. Not, you, I could just easily say, yeah, that looks good. Perfect. Yeah. I took a little bit, a couple of, uh, not even, like two minutes to just talk him through Tell me how you did it and you did a great job and I can see that you put a lot of effort into it. And are you happy with the result you just received? And I said, yeah, of course I, I am because it looks good. And I asked him, do you feel like if you would continue to write in, in that style and in, in that art that you are going to make less mistakes when it comes down to your writing? He said, yeah, because I take more time and I take more time to write the words and i say yeah maybe so maybe try it the next time and see if it will get you the same result i said yeah okay cool yeah so i think that is a, a good example obviously you can use it in yourself and work for example on your patience when it comes down to having a toddler but really kind mm. of starting to teach him a growth mindset if i think it's going to be a later stage in his age i think so I don't know. Yeah, but that, that's a very interesting point because I, I thought so too in the beginning because I, I also thought like, okay, my, first of all, how much does a, a kid of one and a half years old, how much does he understand from, you know, like the words you're using, the praise you're giving, etc. But then on the other hand, he, he understands more than we probably can imagine. And it, it won't harm, you know, like praising him in a growth mindset kind of way. But I do see that when, you know, like when the kid is the, the age of your kids, it's probably there are more situations or like more apparent situations where you can use that kind of praise. And yeah, it, it, for me, it's, it's a, I'm, I'm trying to implement it as well. Question for you, was it, you know, with the, the example that you gave with the handwriting, was it, did it come natural to you, this kind of feedback that you gave? Or did you have to, you know, like, be quiet for a couple of seconds, think of, okay, actively think, what am I going to give him? What kind of feedback am I going to give yeah, him? Yeah, because it's still new to me, obviously. And mm. it surprised me in that way that it came quicker than I thought, you know? So, um, yeah. so it's easier for me, and especially, and we're going to talk about it in a minute, um, the part you sent me today, I obviously listen because I listen to everything you sending send me. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the woman that is on there gave a good example or just a mantra more likely and I repeated the mantra all day for myself and I I was already in the growth mindset mode because um, we had to I had to get blood work done for both of my kids today. So they all both yeah. had to get stinged. Is it stinged? I have no idea. So, um, yeah, yeah. Oh, punched by a that? needle. <laughs> yeah. So, and obviously for kids, that's not fun. And to draw blood. To draw blood. And um, they both got a, a plaster. Is it um, both got the plaster on the arm? A band, a band aid, yeah, sorry, a, band -aid. a specific band aid yeah. which has like a substance on it which numbs the skin and makes the taking blood easier, oh, yeah. so it's not as hurtful, even when it doesn't really hurt. Yeah. But so, but they both were really scared, and I immediately took the advice the woman gave on the part where I said, "Hey guys, I fully understand where you come from." I don't, I don't, I also don't like getting blood work done. It's not fun and it hurts and it's kind of scary because you got pinched by a needle. But obviously we need that to take a look into your body and see how, if everything's okay and um, make sure that you have the right nutrition and get the right food. Mm -hmm. And I understand your fear, but this is something 
that has to be done. And even when you grow up, there's a lot of stuff you potentially going to have to do, which is not fun, but is necessary for you to, to yeah. go on in your life. It's as if I'm listening to the podcast yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. This, and I, I, this is I, more I, or less I copied, literally what you said. I copied the whole script more likely because I feel like, yeah. okay, let's give it a try and let's see. And interestingly, so they were both scared and they were not thrilled about the So the, the, the older one, Kazi, um, did a great job. He cried in the beginning when I was still in the car without his little brother. But when the little brother joined, he just stopped and just... Because I said, hey, I need you on my side here. Because if you, as the older one, are going to start crying and be scared, the little one is getting worse. So yeah, uh, yeah. please just help me. I know it's not your job, but uh, I that I would we're on the same you team. the same team and I'm here and I'm, trust me, it's not going to be as worse as you're going to imagine. And in the end, based on the band aid, it wasn't that bad for the experience. And I, I told them, yeah, so now that you experienced the whole blood drawing thing and you experienced it in the past and we had the same situation two years ago, so wasn't it as bad? And they both said, no, it wasn't. So I told them, so yeah. you, you were scared and your fear kind of drove you into this kind of mood. But in the end, I wouldn't say it wasn't worth it, but it was like more your fear than yeah. the actual situation. So it kind of worked, but I was still kind of in that mood and try to resolve all kind of the problems that were occurring that day and that kind of parenting style. And it's a parenting style, yeah, which is completely nice. on grown mindset. And when you're already in the mood or in this mode and this grown mindset parenting mood, I think then it becomes easier. I think maybe we need to take it one step back. The, the reason why we are both a fan of the growth mindset theory, I think, if I can talk for you as well, but in the book, she explains that if you create growth mindset children or children with a growth mindset, you create children who are looking to like looking forward to challenging themselves. They are eager to develop and go beyond that point where they might fail. Um, they, they will fail, but they will not stop after that. They will not be like, okay, I'm a loser. I cannot do anything. You know what? Fuck it. I'm not going to do anything anymore, which is going to be difficult for me. No, they're, they're going to learn from that failure and they're going to enjoy a bigger task or a bigger challenge. And I think that's very important if you want to have children who are, you know, like constantly going to develop themselves and, you know, who, who can, you know, thrive in life. I do find it sometimes pretty difficult because obviously you, you read a book, you read about the theory and you think, okay, how can I do this in my life and with Ziggy? And I do agree with you that at, at Ziggy's age, I may be, maybe it's a bit more difficult or to find the, the 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 things or the events where you can you know like use the growth mindset uh, apply the growth mindset but i do think there are a lot of like little things that he does right now where we can already do it because for instance we we have given him um crayons so he you know like we sit him at the table and he's just having a crayon and he's just you know like drawing obviously it looks like nothing it looks like shit um, but he is super young. He doesn't know how to draw a sun or a, a, a bicycle or a house or whatsoever. So it makes sense that it's nothing, but you shouldn't say like, Hey, oh, that's a nice, I don't know, a uh, line that you've drawn, but you know, like instead, like, are oh, you doing so well? You're, you're having so much fun drawing. It's so, so nice that you're having fun while you're drawing, you know, like, or when he's driving his tricycle, we don't say or try not to say as often like, you're doing a really good job. No, like you're doing so well driving your tricycle. It's really fun that you to see you, you know, do this. Or it's really good that you have so much fun. So I think there are a lot of, you know, like small moments where you can use it. But then again, it's, you know, like what you pinpointed already. Like I as well have been raised in a very fixed mindset kind of way. It was always focused on the result. So 
my that's why i asked you the question as well like did you have to pause for a moment because my natural instinct is to compliment ziggy on the achievement instead of the process so yeah i'm i'm really trying to find ways to uh, get this growth mindset in there yeah and i think it's a it's a journey uh, so obviously i constantly and she we the, the, in the podcast for example there was a talk about the dictatorship and i i fully recognized myself there because i'm not mm. so if i ask for something and then kind of the discussion stuff starts i a lot of times just say because i told you so you know yeah you know? so this is something i have to work on but i was at a point where i was so annoyed and or annoyed or not patient enough to spend the time to explain all the decision and the requests and all this stuff so obviously it doesn't come especially when you raised in a more kind of goal and um, accomplished some environment to switch gears and rethink all the stuff you learned from the past and she said it as well i i scream at my kids from time to time it doesn't feel good exactly so you, you have to fall and i think that's part of the growth mindset to say okay i have to fall i have to question okay what I, did i do wrong and where is something i can improve and then just get back up and just keep going and then again there, the, you don't have to always answer the questions of of your kid you know like it doesn't always have to end up in a discussion sometimes saying because i said so it's also fine right i mean just as long as it's not 100 of the time but sometimes it's it's done with all the talking and discussing then it's just okay we have to do it this way at least that's my opinion yeah. about it but i think that i'm i'm a bit more a bit less patient and a bit more how do you call it an authoritarian yeah. way yeah. of raising my yeah. kid uh, if i compare it to my wife yeah. uh, which i think the combination of those two is is especially a very interesting thing i always say we are um, there's the black knight and the white knight and my wife is a lot of times the white knight <laughs> yeah <laughs> but obviously that is part of Kind of the relationship you have with your partner and you need to figure out okay uh, is it always kind of good cop bad cop or uh, from time to time we have to kind of be the bad cop together or the good cop together yeah um, yeah and i think then you you see how you get got raised in different environments right yeah that that's also a very good one yeah. hey but we we already touched uh, the the podcast already um, for those who um, who are interested in it, uh, we will link it in the show notes. But it's a podcast episode from obviously the Huberman Lab, where he speaks with Becky Kennedy about parenting. And I think one of the things that tickled me the most is the beginning, somewhere in the beginning of the pod, where um, she explains that, you know, like when you apply for a job or when you start a new job, um, you never start your work without a full job description. What are my tasks? What are my responsibilities? Where does it begin? Where does it end? And the same should actually, or could actually apply to parenthood. And what is the job description of parenthood? And I found it so interesting to, you know, that she mentioned it because I never thought of it that way. You know, like my wife and I, we decided we want to have a kid. And probably my wife thought about it way more and way further than I did. I just thought, okay, cool. Yeah, I, I think I'm ready for a kid. I could see it as, a, um, as an extra to our life. But I never thought, what exactly is the job description of being a father? So here's my question to you. What do you think is the job description being a parent? That's so hard. TikTok. That's so hard. <laughs> shall I shall I lead it? What I think, and then then you can think of your version. Uh, because I would like to uh, use my use this as a cliffhanger, because we're already pretty hefty Ooh. in. So I'm going to think about it um, the week and going to give you my answer next week, because I think that is something cool. I have to deep dive a bit more and think a bit more before I start babbling again. And it leads to literally yeah. nowhere. 
So I'm going yeah. to give you my right. answer next week. Shall I give the answer then next week as well? Because then we we'll just make one episode. Yeah, let's out of do it. that because we are already so I think that is a cool topic to talk about. And my overall answer would be nobody is going to give you a fucking honest answer when you're a parent and when you're an, a, going to decide to have a kid and you're pregnant. Nobody's going to talk about the sleepless nights and all this stuff. Um, so No, but probably you've heard of them. <laughs> you've heard of them, but... Um, or if you've seen it in their faces. Everybody said, yeah, parents. it's so nice. Oh, we are so happy for you guys. Nobody's going to say, buckle up, guys. That's going to be a hefty ride. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you want to do this yeah it's too late maybe, it's psych <laughs> maybe this is a perfect spot where we can uh plug our sponsor durex condoms yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right um mars we have to come to an end i think that's a cool um, cool thing to end the conversation and pick it up uh, next week yeah before we head out um anything exciting any exciting plans for next week? Wow, I never think of this question. I, ne I, I, I tend to not look too far ahead, which is maybe also why I'm bad at planning things. <laughs> But this weekend we're, um, we're, we're planning to visit friends. Uh, they got a new baby, uh, a new baby. They, they recently had a baby. Um, he's actually a fond or both of them are fond listeners of the pod. So I think <laughs> the, the job description and the buckle up part <laughs> might be interesting for them, <laughs> but no, for the rest, I, I've, I have no clue. <laughs> and yeah. you? Yeah. Nice. Uh, tournament. Yeah. I have the weekend. hockey tournament. That would be interesting regarding the, the workouts. I'm going to yeah. try to look up gyms where I can kind of sneak in a trial membership and just to trial workout for two days maybe um, since i'm just an observing parent and i'm not in charge of really looking out for the kids maybe i can sneak away for an hour and put a workout in um i need to do my Can't research you, do you have a kettlebell yeah but i'm not going to do a workout when other people can see that's weird why i mean you can just you know like behind the canteen or something yeah or yeah, behind yeah. The maybe room. maybe i'm just bringing my yoga mat and do but i i'm i'm going to look up because i don't want to i would like to continue my normal workout routine so Maybe if I have a chance to hit a gym there, that would be nice. Yeah. At least for an hour. Yeah. Aside of that, not nothing, um, nothing planned in particular. Um, I have to cut a lot of podcasts, so that will be my main goal for next week. Cool. Then let's uh, leave it at the cliffhanger. Yes. Hear you in a week. Bye. All right, man. Looking forward. Bye bye.